Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to this webinar on the Trimble X7 with Trimble RealWorks 11.2. I'll give you a warning right up front. My computer has been randomly turning off these past couple of days. I don't know why. So if I should leave the webinar for some reason, don't worry, I will be back soon. My name is Jason Hayes. I'm the product manager of geospatial scanning software here at Trimble. Uh, before I worked in the software, I also worked with uh, the hardware uh, with TX8. So I can answer a lot of questions. And speaking of questions, feel free to type in any questions you have into the chat. And at the end of the webinar, we'll make sure that we take some time to answer those. So the agenda today, I'll start out with just a quick overview of the Trimble X7 and perspective. I won't go into a deep dive on the two as we've had a number of webinars already on both of those, um, including some LinkedIn live presentations. Uh, but for those of you that aren't familiar with the solution, I will have an overview. Then we'll take a look at importing the data, getting that into Trimble RealWorks, look at some of the new features that are in common between RealWorks and Perspective with the labels and the annotations, show you some of the data and what you can do with it in RealWorks, uh, do a bit of georeferencing, and then try to save about 10 minutes at the end for those questions I told you about. All right, so let's get started. The Trimble X7 is what we like to call a well-balanced solution. And you might say, well, what is a well-balanced solution? Uh, well, on one end of the spectrum, you might have a very inexpensive piece of equipment that doesn't really do a lot. Um, the other end of the uh, spectrum, you might have something very expensive that does more than what you need. What we've tried to do with the solution, like we said, is find the perfect balance of what you need as scanning professionals. To do that, we've come up with three key points, keeping it simple, smart, and professional. By simple, just making the solution simple to use, easy to use, easy to adopt uh, for new users, um, but also making the system smart, having great technologies like auto calibration, auto leveling, auto registration, um, and also features that people familiar with scanning, expert users, if you will, will also find useful. And on the professional end, we've really tried to make the instrument um, something that you would really uh, benefit doing work with. Um, having the great temperature range, today would have been perfect here in Colorado, we were at uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit, but having a great temperature range, excellent IP environmental rating, um, and an astounding two-year warranty. So making sure that the system's strong with that auto calibration, making sure that your data is right, and really being a professional solution. Now, looking at the software more in depth, Oh, yeah, so I just had a question saying that um, somebody couldn't hear anything. I'm just going to. Try to type in my chat. Or my. Ch oh, the audio is working. Okay, if you can hear me, did somebody say I can hear you? Yeah, can somebody just confirm? It's okay. Ah, okay, sorry about that, it was just uh, an issue. Okay, so on the perspective side, the Trimble software, uh, a big part of the solution being simple is the work that we've done on the software. Uh, so really going through putting uh, years of research in to working with customers and finding out what is working, what's intuitive to get to the final product that you see today. Uh, making it very approachable. A uh, big part of that with the interface, the 3D visualization, being able to see your data in the field, knowing that you've captured everything that you need to. Um, pair that with the automatic registration, knowing that your data is going to register at the end of the day. And then adding new tools such as annotations and measurements right in the field. And all that seamlessly going into our Trimble software. Um, on the software side, as far as smart, I talk a lot about the automated registration. So this is a tool we've got called Trimble Registration Assist. The scanner um, is an IMU-based system, and the software is going to use that information to help register to the last station. 
um, not always the last station. You can manually change it to register to whatever station you want. It could be the closest one, or maybe you need to go someplace completely different in the project because you have access and scan there for a little while and then come back. You can create what we call registration sets. But this ability to have the registration in the field, again, gives you the peace of mind that you know that the data will come together back in the office. Um, some of the professional features we've added into the software are labels. Um, labels are used to go in and tag a scanned station. Uh, what prompted this was, you know, looking back on projects that we've done in the past that were very large and had dispersed teams. Maybe you have two or three scanners on a site, different people uh, scanning in different areas, and then trying to register that at the end of the day, not knowing where people were, um, for example, on a multi-floor building, not knowing if they were on the first floor or the fifth floor or the sixth floor, they all start to look the same. So being able to go in and tag each station so that you knew exactly where that scan was done um, is really going to help in the end when you're putting together these large projects. Add to that annotations, this is the ability to go in and tag areas in the scan and add some descriptive information about it along with the picture. You can see here there's some annotations on the screen highlighting where the stairs are, where the elevator shafts are, and it's really meant to help you when you get back into the office and you're trying to work with your data or create something. Having that benefit of being able to give yourself notes later on to know why you did something or where something is. We'll take a look at a bit more of those when we look at the data later. So jumping into exporting the data, getting it out of the X7 or the perspective software. You really have two options. You can export directly from the perspective software. In this case, I will generally plug in a uh, external hard drive to the, you can, you can see the T10 tablet here. I'll plug that in and export to that. Um, I like these little SSD external hard drives. And then I can continue working on that when I work in the office. Or you could use a thumb drive, whatever you like. There's a USB port on here to export it. Um, if you're connected to the Wi-Fi, you could even export it and then put that up in the cloud somewhere. Uh, but the way you, with using Perspective, you get the benefit of having the infield registration. You get the benefit of using the labels and the annotations on there as well. Now, the alternative is just to download the data directly from the scanner, taking the SD card out and plugging it into your computer and downloading. In this case, you get the scans, you get any photos that were associated with it, uh, but you're losing the benefit of the infield registration as well as the ability to add annotations and labels. So just to run you through the process of exporting it from Perspective, this is the Perspective software you see on the screen. In the upper left, you'll see the menu. We just select that and it'll bring up a few options of what you can do. What we're interested in is finalizing and exporting our project. So selecting that, you'll see that it brings up a dialogue asking you what you'd like to do. Now, the first thing that we have is refine project. What that is, is the ability to create cross ties between each of your scans in the registration. As I mentioned earlier, when you're scanning in the field, you're connecting one station to another, generally the station right before it. But at the end of the project, we want to create cross ties to create a strong registration across the entire project. So that's what Refine is. In addition, you can also colorize the point clouds. So by default, we're not doing this in the field as we go, um, just because that's too many processes to have going at one time. And we want to make uh, scanning as efficient as possible. We wouldn't want to slow you down by using the software. Uh, so we add this as a later stage and then you can also export your data. Now, when I select those two options, you'll notice it's also going to create high quality panorama images that you will use in a station-based view, which I'll show you later on. Now, the next thing we need to do is just select where we want to send this data and what type of file format. So this is just a typical window screen, select a folder that you want to export it to, and then you need to select a file type. Now, TDX is our file format that we use to exchange scan data back and forth between different scanning softwares, such as Trimble Business Center, Trimble Rowworks, and Trimble Perspective. Now, in addition, we also have TZF files, which are just the uh, compressed scan files uh, that are created in the scanner. 
we have E57 gridded files. These are going out as individual scans. And this is what you would want to use if you were to take it into a software that needed to have each station as an individual file. Uh, for example, if you wanted to do registration somewhere else or wanted to get station-based views, you would want to use that. Uh, PTX is the same way. Uh, alternatively, you could use an LAS file, which is just one single file of the whole project, no station information, but you would use something like that if you were to go to like Trimble uh, Clarity, the web-based viewer to look at that. Uh, we also have POD for Bentley products, as well as Autodesk recap files, the RCP. Now, the RCP exporter, it's a, it's a black box that we get from Autodesk, it doesn't seem to be particularly efficient. The best way I found to, to bring these files into Autodesk is actually to use the E57 gridded. It's a very fast process from Perspective or Trimble Realworks, and then just bring it directly into, say, Revit or Civil 3D, and it will automatically convert those, and it seems to go much faster that way, so I would recommend doing that. But again, we're going into Trimble Realworks today, so we want to use this TDX file uh, to send the data out. It's going to send the scans, the images, all of the annotations and labels with it. And then we just click on the finalize button and the data goes out. Now, importing the data into Trimble Realworks, what I would generally do is I would go through and I'm just going to launch a quick um, presentation here. Um, it's going to create a TDX folder, and in that folder, you're going to see three objects. You're going to see your data file. It's a folder that's got all of the, the scans and the images in it. You'll have a JPEG, which is just an overall project image. If you took an image with the tablet when you created your project, it would use that. If you didn't, it's just going to pick one of the scan stations. And then you finally, you have your TDX, which is what you would bring into the software. So to do that, I will generally just go and drag and drop the TDX file directly on the RealWorks desktop. Doing that, it's just going to tell me that I need to save this as a RealWorks project file, which is okay. I just go in, give it a name and a location and click save. Once I do that, I'm going to be prompted on how I want to bring the data in. Do I want to bring in every single point, every other point? Do I want to filter it by range? And do I want to create panorama images? Now, these aren't just the station images, they're standalone images, and I'll show you those coming up pretty quick. And then we just click Start, and it's going to go through and start to process the scans and extract those points into the software. Now, it's, when it's finished, you're going to get this batch output folder in addition to your RealWorks project. In this batch output folder, that's where you're going to find all of these JPEG images, uh, the panoramas of, from each station. If I click on one individually, you can see there's the, the entire panorama station view. You can see over on the left, there were some targets. Here's a, a gas station. And you can use those for whatever you like. Now, alternative, instead of bringing the data in from perspective, I told you you could bring it in from the SD card. So bringing the data into RealWorks from the SD card is pretty straightforward. We just go to the import and register button. This is probably the easiest one step to do it. And when you do that, again, you're going to need to change this as a RealWorks project, just like we did before. But now the menu changes a little bit. You need to select the files you want to import. You could select individual scans, or you could select an individual folder. You could even create groups to put the scans in. Again, using the SD card, you don't have the benefit of the labels um, and the registration in the field. So you may want to create groups of first floor, second floor, third floor, et cetera, and then put the scans into those groups before you start the registration. But in this case, I'm just going to select a folder, and I'm just going to browse to the folder on the SD card. This is the crawl space. I would probably actually transfer this to my computer first, but in this case, I'm just bringing it in from the SD card. And you can see it's populating all of the scans here. I could delete any scan if I didn't want to bring it in for some reason. I could add other scans now. I could select another folder from another X7 or even from a TX8 or even uh, another brand of scanner if I wanted to and bring all these scans in together. Just like last time, we have the option to say how we want to bring the points in. I can bring in every point, every second point, every third point, 
I could even do a spatial sampling where if I wanted a half meter grid, I could bring in points uh, roughly on a half meter. Um, and I also have the option if I wanted to, to filter by range. Now, the next thing that we want to do, because we didn't get that benefit of the infield registration, um, because we're just bringing it in straight from the SD card, we can choose to enable registration and we can select if we want to register with targets or without. In this case, I just selected to extract targets and register. I've selected a couple of different sphere sizes and also black and white targets. So the software will go through and automatically look for these targets. Once it finds them, then it will register. And then you just click start. It'll go through extracting the points and doing the targets and then the registration. Once it's all done, you'll get a completed notification and you just simply close the tool. Next, we want to look at the data in Trimble RealWorks. Oops, so I'm just going to switch over to Trimble RealWorks now and show you this is a bit of what the scan data will look like. So you can see here, we've brought in all of the scans. You can see each station is a different color. In Trimble RealWorks, I'm in the registration mode up here. So I have all of my registration tools available. The first thing that I usually want to do once I bring it into RealWorks, because I can see all of the points in perspective when you're in the field, we're only showing uh, a portion of the points um, just for the sake of time. So here in RealWorks, I can see all of the points. I've extracted them all. So I'm going to go to the registration tab. I want to do a registration visual check. So opening this tool, I just have a quick way to go and create a slice through my point cloud. So I'm just going to click down here along this building somewhere. And it's going to create this slice through here. Now I can move this slice up and down through the project to see different areas. And then I just want to come and look at the point clouds to make sure that they're aligning. Now this is a pretty big slice. I'm gonna make this a little bit thinner. Oops, I closed my tool, sorry about that. Okay, and then I want to look at the point cloud and make sure I see a good intermingling of the points along here. So I'm checking vertical walls, surfaces. There's probably 10 different scans that touch this wall. So it's good to see all of the different colors mixing together on there. So I'll generally go through and check a few different areas along the project to make sure that things are looking good. This was a brick wall, I remember, so it's a little bumpy. And look around like that. Um, now, I also would like to go in and check um, different areas. So I'm just going to select a new center point and I'm gonna check the top of this light pole. Oh, I missed the top of the light pole. Okay, so there's the top of the light pole. Now I'm looking at this light pole in particular because I, in the field, I noticed something strange. So let's look at the registration. So on here, you'll notice that it's off a little bit. And this is what I typically wouldn't want to see. Um, I see a nice line here, but then I see a couple of other lines. So normally this would tell me I need to look at the registration uh, because there's something probably not right with it. But in this case, if I come back out here, I'm going to show you a little bit of the annotations. So in Trimble RealWorks with the addition of 11.2, we have a new tab called annotations. I'm just going to select all of those and turn them on. And I can see that there's an annotation right here on top of the light pole. And if I hover over it, I can see that it says light pole moving in wind. Uh, so this was a note I left to myself so that when I was checking the registration later on, I would know why this didn't look good. In fact, it was very windy on the day that I did the scan and everything was moving quite a bit. This light pole, I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, moving two or three inches at the top, shaking in the wind. So I knew that I would see that when I was checking the registration and then I would be worried and I wanted to leave that note to me or whoever was in the office to let them know what was going on right there. Now, I also like to check the ground when I do these registration checks. There's a nice tool in RealWorks called the magnifier. You just move your mouse cursor over a specific area and tap the N key and you can zoom in. So I always like to give a good check on the ground to make sure that looks good and that there's no elevation problems with my scans coming together. Now this one, there's a lot of snow. Um, 
that was melting. I did the scan over three days. So I have to be a little strategic where I look. If I was to check over here, you can see there's still piles of snow melting in different states. Now, let me show you a little bit more of the annotations. So they're not just useful for leaving yourself notes, but they're also useful for going in and letting yourself know where things are important for modeling or creating line work. So here we've got a row of annotations that we created. If I hover over this one, I can see that this is a buried electric line marking. So if I select that and just open up the properties, I can go and look at that a little bit more in detail. And I can in fact see that there were flags and painting with the buried electric line out there. Uh, if I check over here, here's some yellow ones. So this is buried gas line marking. If I open that up, you can see that there's the buried gas line markings there. So this is really going to help. Uh, these images were taken from the tablet to highlight specific areas. Here's one over here. So looking at the point cloud, I really don't see much out here. Um, it looks like uh, there was a car driving by or there's, oh no, it's a crack. There's a crack in the, uh, in the ground, but I don't really see anything there. But if I tap on this annotation, I can see that there was an, um, uh, a lid to a sewer access there. So I can see it right there. And then now when I come back and look at the point cloud, I can actually kind of make it out. But you can imagine if these features were important to create in your final model or final drawing, it could take days to go through looking at the point cloud to try to find something you know, small and flat on the ground. But by adding these annotations while you're in the field and everything is clear, it makes it so much easier to find these important objects once you get back to the office. Now, of course, over here, we've got another manhole and it sticks out because it's quite a bit larger. Here's some other ones over here. Um, but the annotations make it so much easier to, to find those. Now, in Trimble RealWorks, if I wanted to go through and uh, create annotations in here, I can do that also. In fact, all of these annotations that came in, um, they were different colors, but I went through and changed the color. So you can see all of my electric lines. I've changed the annotation color here to be red. All of my gas lines, I've changed those to be yellow. Now every country's probably got different coloring uh, schemes that they use uh, for the sewer. We've made this uh, a green one water we've made these all blue so it makes it a little bit more intuitive while you're looking at your point cloud and working with it i'm just going to turn on a few point clouds i ran through and i did some automatic classification on the project before i started working with it i'm just going to display all of these clouds uh, so the software went through and automatically classified different objects. Now, it didn't get them all perfect. I had to do some cleanup, especially on these objects that were a little farther away, like the light poles. Um, but it didn't take too long. I essentially just used the segmentation tool and quickly added those to a, a new classification layer. Uh, but the classifications are super useful for cleaning things up and making it easy to look at and identify. For example, if I just wanted to see the light poles, I could go into these poles and signs, just select all my light poles and choose view only this. And in that case, then I see only the point clouds that are associated with the light poles. So again, very nice to go in and just quickly identify things using that capability of going through and looking at those. Just going to display all of the objects again. Um, talking about adding annotations, I could create one over here on this gas pump, for example. And before I do that, I'm actually just going to import a, an image. We're just going to select the complete additional data. There's an image in here. I'm just going to import. This was a, an image I took with my phone as I was leaving, and I thought it might be helpful later on when I was doing the modeling. Uh, so I'm going to create an annotation. I'm just going to type a position right here. I'm just going to select it on this gas pump. We'll call it gas pump. And just image for modeling, just so I know what it is. Didn't spell that quite right. And then I can select an image. So in here, I've imported that. And I can click Create. 
so I can create annotations in perspective. I can also create these inside of Trimble Realworks. So now if I select that, then I can go in and look at that and I can see a lot more detail for when I go to start modeling it and it's in the right position for me. Now, I told you a little bit earlier about importing uh, and creating those panoramic images. If I go to Scan Explorer, uh, this is a, a tool within Trimble Rollworks, allows you to see station-based views. There's a really cool guy out scanning, listening to some music it looks like. Uh, but in here, we can go through and select different stations that we want to look at. We can select different renderings. So this is true color. These is using the panoramas that uh, Perspective created. We can also see the data in an intensity-based view. So different surfaces are giving us different intensity. And also look at it, for example, in a grayscale. So this is nice for going through and finding different features. For example, if I wanted to draw these parking stripes, I could do that on there as well. If I was to look at my 3D view, I can turn on my stations over here. And by station, um, we'll say station 10, I know that that was over by where the line markings were. I can go there to station 10, change this to true color. And then those annotations let me know where to look. I knew to look by station 10. So then I can come in and add maybe a feature code in here. So I could create uh, like a buried line, give it a description, uh, buried electric and then select a feature code right there. Now the images, again, I'm always not totally trusting of images, so I may want to go to the grayscale. And you can see that part, paint mark there in the grayscale as well, and then go ahead and click Create. And then if I was to go and look into Trimble Realworks, I now see that I've got um, my feature code created in here. So that's a little bit of going through and doing annotations and the views. Let me tell you a little bit about the um, use of labels in the process. So if I go back to the PowerPoint here very quickly. Okay. So we talked, oh, let me show you a little bit about the annotations, actually I skipped some. Uh, creating those annotations in perspective in the field is pretty simple. You just zoom in on an area of the point cloud where you want to create them, type in a name and a description. You can take a photo right there with your tablet and create them. Once you create them, then they're tagged in the point cloud. You can see them in this station-based view. You can see the images that have been added. You can click to see details. And you can also see them out here in the 3D view. So this is the, the view in perspective of the project out in the field. Um, so you can see that it's colorized. I told you I usually do this after the fact. I went out at three days on my lunch break just to capture the data for the, the webinar. So it was broken up over different times. So I would colorize something while I was driving back to the office uh, so that when I went back out the next day, I'd have a little bit more uh, to look at but you can see the, the point cloud in perspective. You can see all of the annotations that I was adding, and you can see where they are right here in the, in the 3D view. Now, labels are a little bit different than annotations in that they allow you to go in, and you see down here in the lower left corner, and apply this directly to a station. So this is scan 35 that would be next, and the label is uh, one label has been attached. If I want to add another label, I can just tap on that label icon and add a new label. And then if I look at the labels, this is the station view inside of perspective. I can bring up each station and see information about that. And you'll notice that these have a tag on them that has a label right here and it says day three. If I want to see only the scans from day three, I would tap on that tag and then it's going to bring it up up here to let me know that that tag is active. And now you can see there's less points on the screen. I'm only seeing the scans from day three. So here's all of the scans together. And then here's just the scans from day three. So you can imagine if I was on a multi-floor building or on a ship or something large, it would be very useful to be able to go back and look at different stations from different days or different areas on the ship. <clears throat> We can even add more than one label to a station so we can get even more descriptive on doing that. And to look at these inside of Trimble Realworks, 
just switch back to Trumbull Rule Works quickly. The way I would do that is I can see each of my stations here. I can go in and use this very nice feature called Find. So the Find feature in Trimble RealWorks allows you to search for a lot of different things. You can select different types such as ortho images or models or annotations or survey points. In this case, I wanna choose station. And then from stations, I've got different things to look for. I can look for leveled versus unleveled. I can type a name, but I wanna look for labels in this case. And up here, you can see that I've typed day two. So I can click find and it's going to show me all of the scans from day two. So if I just select those and right click, oh, before I right click, you'll notice that as I select them here in the search bar, they're also getting highlighted over here in the RealWorks workspace. So I'm just right clicking and choose view only this. So now you can see it's only showing those three scans from day two. That was a short lunch. Uh, so there's a, a scan there, 21, 22, and 23. So just a very short time to go out and scan, but you can see each of those there. If I was to change this to day three, for example, you can see that there's quite a few more scans. So I could say view only this, and now it's going to hide the day two and only show me the scans that were captured on day three. So very useful for putting your project together and doing your final registration. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more of what you can do with the point cloud inside of Trimble RealWorks. So I'm just going to hide the stations. Now the reason you scan and get all of this data is so that you can start to get answers or start to answer, uh, answer questions or create models or drawings from your point clouds. Uh, so some of the tools that we have in RealWorks, again, I'll just make it pretty basic, but starting out we have measurement tools. For example, if I wanted to measure these light poles, I could look at this one, I could change to a vertical measurement, and then just looking at this point cloud, maybe I'll click, click up here on the very top, and then I just wanna click down here at the base. Now I could pick at the base here, I can pick wherever I want in the point cloud. So I'll just pick right down here. The zoom out, I can see that that's a 10.3 meter light pole. Maybe I want to check this one over here, so I could check this one as well. So click up here along the top, come down here along the bottom, and pick one at the base, and so 10.2. So these are all roughly 10 meter light poles, but maybe I want to know um, a horizontal distance. So maybe over here on, I'm going to hide the vegetation just to get it out of the way. Maybe I want to know the clearance for getting vehicles through here. I could do a horizontal measurement. So in this case, I could come over here on this uh, pylon, click on that. Oh, I didn't quite catch the inside like I wanted to. So I'm just going to come back and increase this. Okay, make that a little bigger so I can get some context. So I wanna click on the inside here. Then I wanna come over here, click on this other one. Again, just make sure I'm in the right place on it. Click on the inside. So I can see that I've got about 9.6 meters of clearance between here. So if I wanted to make sure that a vehicle would fit, I could turn on my point cloud of one of the cars that was parked over here. I could do the same thing. I could come through and take some measurements on that. For example, we'll just click on the outside of the wheel here, come over here, click on the other side of this wheel. And we can see that this car is only about 1.7 meters. So we can clearly get a few cars through there. The reason I bring this up is the gas station I go to fuel up and is really tight and it drives me crazy. So I'm obsessed with these clearances. Uh, now, if you didn't want to just take measurements and get these, and of course I can save these measurements and bring them up later or export them if I want. Uh, but if you wanted to do more, here's an example where we've gone through and done some quick modeling on here. I'm just going to display the geometry. And uh, you can see that I just seeing wireframes and I'm going to change this to textured. And I'm just going to hide, after this is displayed, hide the point cloud showing all of the building. So now I can just look at the textured model. So this was a model we created inside of Trimble RealWorks uh, using the modeling addition. Uh, we've also textured it, so it gives a lot of context as to what's going on. Uh, kind of a trick you can do if you don't want to model all of the fine details, you can add texture to it. Uh, similar to like what you see in Google Earth. And you can get a lot of information just out of having these objects modeled in here. 
If I wanted to, I could take this model and export it, this mesh, uh, view it in something like Google Earth to get some idea. Maybe you're doing some planning or something uh, along those lines. Uh, so modeling, we can also go in and do some line work. I'm just going to bring up the drawing tool here and open up the cutting plane. So cutting planes is, are nice. If I wanted to create cross sections of an object like that building, I could do that. In this case, I'm just going to set my elevation perpendicular to the elevation or z-axis. So I've got my plane here. And I can move this plane, for example, if I wanted to find out where the water maybe is going to settle in this parking lot to find the low areas. So I've created a plane. I'm just displaying the ground that was uh, auto extracted. And I can move this plane down. So anywhere you can see the dark brown, that's where the ground is above the plane. So if I continue to move it down, you can kind of see where water would start to settle in this parking lot. And for context, if you just want to see really quick, this is where the, the building is sitting. So you can see where all of this is in relation to everything else. And as I continue to move this plane down, you can see that the water is all going to start to settle in this corner down here and all leading into here. So you would hope that there would be some sort of a, a drain over there. If I turn on my annotations, I can look and see if I've highlighted anything. And in this case, you can see that there is in fact an annotation. It says drain. If I bring that up in my properties, I can see that there's a nice drain right there. So zooming in on the point cloud, you can see that there's a break in the curb here to let the water through and go to that drain. So you can get a lot of information out of just looking at this. If we wanted to do uh, quick drawings, for example, I could go in and instead of selecting the ground, I could have selected the um, I'm just going to hide everything and only view my point cloud of my building here. And again, I'll use the cutting plane to go in here. While it's launching, you can see there's a number of tools for feature coding, creating um, uh, different kinds of drawings. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make this cutting plane perpendicular to the Z axis. And then I can pick a location where I want it to be, maybe right here. So if I needed to draw some footprints of these buildings, you can see it's creating a quick outline. I can make the thickness, this is a very thick plane. Um, I can make it a lot thinner. So now you just get the outline of the building and you can see where all the gas pumps are sitting. And if we wanted to draw that, we could create this as a slice and take that slice and we could export that out um, to go to uh, a different file formats. Um, probably taking it into Autodesk or Bentley or something like that. So I'd probably use that POD or that E57 to export that out. And then you can do your drawing in there. If you wanted to, you could also do drawing right inside of Trimble Rillworks using the polyline drawing tools. Now I've just got a little bit more, to more time left. I wanted to show you um, quickly if you wanted to geo-reference this project to get it into a coordinate system. I would start out by importing a control file. So in this case, uh, survey network, I'm going to click open. Oh, I'm going to go to additional data, survey network file. Maybe I don't have it on that. Ah, here we go, additional data. Okay, here's a text file. If I wanted to, I could actually go in here. <clears throat> and open that, you can see here's my coordinates. There's four different control points, uh, X, Y, or the Northeast and the elevation. Uh, the elevation here in Colorado is about 5,200 feet. So 1,600 was probably going to let me know that it's in meters. So I can select that and open. It's going to bring it in. It's going to ask how I want to bring it in. Tabulation looks good. This is a preview is how it's coming in. Uh, the format, point northeast, elevation description, um, and meters. So that looks okay. So you can see now it's brought in this topo station here folder. And here's my topo station way up here at the top. You can probably barely see it down here is my scan. So these things are very far apart because the scan was at a zero zero coordinate system. Um, whereas this is probably a state plane, I would suspect. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go through and extract 
targets. So I could select specific stations. Uh, we'll say uh, 26, 28, 30, and 32. I know that those are in there. I would go to registration and select auto extract targets, let the software go through and find those. I may have already done this, I don't remember. So I'm just going to go to my target analyzer to see if there's any targets that have been created. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any targets in there, so I haven't. So I'm just going to, again, select those stations and choose auto extract targets. Spherical targets, these were 150 millimeter, um, and click OK. So while that's going, uh, you can see down in the lower left, it's extracting targets out of there. I'm going to take a quick look to see if any questions have come in. Um, is export uh, RealWorks P plus TZF formats? Um, so there's a question about exporting RealWorks and TZF. Uh, when you export from Trimble Perspective, it's going to create that uh, TDX. Um, but there was also a data folder that went with that, and inside of it is the TZF files, and those are imported into the RealWorks project. That's what you see when you look at the Scan Explorer view that I showed you uh, earlier here, where you see each of the stations. Okay, let's check on this. So it's extracted targets now. Um, looks like it's done okay. Um, so I can quickly just analyze to make sure that these are okay. So station 26 found a target here, right there. That looks like the right target. That looks like a pretty good fit. Okay, so that looks good. So it looks like I probably got enough targets. I could go through and look at them all, but for the sake of time, I'll go quickly here. Click close. Yeah, yes, apply everything. Okay. So we've extracted targets. Now the next thing that I want to do is I just want to go to a target-based registration. So now I've got targets extracted in the project. I've got my control file. I'm just going to go to target-based registration. <clears throat> and I'm just going to run auto match all. It's gone through and matched the targets that it found to the control. So you can see I have some residuals here, about nine millimeters, three millimeters, um, nine millimeters. Oh my goodness, who did this survey control? Wasn't me. Okay, so that looks good. I'll just click adjust. Don't need to see that again and apply. Now it's going to move my project so that everything is in one place. I'm just going to double click on the screen to zoom extents. And so now I can see my targets have been created. Uh, the A1, that's the uh, the topo. It's now on uh, the control point, sorry. They're now in the right place on my project. So if I was to go into here and just hide the point cloud, <clears throat> and I'm just going to change these targets to be viewed as oh, a wireframe. Now we can see our control point basically sitting right inside, just go to a top view, right and see our, our target. So you can see uh, it was a, a few millimeters off of center on the side there, I'm going to blame that mainly on our control. The wind, that's right, it was the wind. Okay, so that's it, uh, the project is georeferenced. so now if I take uh, measurements on these, I shouldn't be getting small coordinate values like uh, less than 100, they should be quite large, and you can see now my elevation is at 1600 meters. So my project has been matched up to that, um, I will note that RealWorks is only working in a scale factor of one. So if I measure the building and it is 10 meters, 10 meters is 10 meters. Um, if you really need to use a real coordinate system, that's where you consider importing your data into Trumbull Business Center, which has very similar workflows. It will actually allow scaling of your point cloud on your project. It's great, especially if you're matching up with mobile mapping data. All right, so let's jump back into the presentation here. Um, I'll just open it up. If there's any questions, please type those into the chat box. Um, I'll leave you with a little bit more here before I jump in and start answering those. Uh, there's some links here. If you'd like to find out more about Trimble Scanning Solutions, you can go to trimble.com forward slash 3D scanning, or I typically just Google Trimble Scanning. Uh, same for Trimble RealWorks. If you wanna learn more about Trimble RealWorks, Trimble.com forward slash RealWorks. Uh, if you want to learn specifically about the X7, you can go to this link here. 
um, but they're all available from this 3D scanning. So here's that page. You can see all of the hardware, the software solutions, so you can find out more on each of those. Um, here's the link for the X7 specifically. Uh, you can also learn a lot more on YouTube, so you can look for Trimble Geospatial. There's a lot of information about all of Trimble's geospatial products. Uh, you, there's also a channel specific for Trimble RealWorks. We have a lot of tutorials on there. Um, and you can also find us on LinkedIn. So Trimble Geospatial, very active on LinkedIn. Uh, myself, I try to put up at least a post once a week about scanning. It can be RealWorks, it can be Trimble X7. Um, and then from the Trimble RealWorks, all of our websites have this link at the top that says where to buy. Um, it's not just where to buy, it brings up our dealer locator. And going to those dealers, you can ask them questions. You can ask them for a demo. You can ask them for a trial code for the software to try it out for a, a period of time. Um, and they can also uh, give you demos and help you with training as well. So uh, dealers all around the world, that where to buy is a really good way to find the closest dealer for you. So now I'm going to go back and take a look now at some of these questions that have come in. Uh, so there was a question, can you get the raw panorama as a JPEG rather than uh, the TCF file? Uh, so the, the, the rawest form you can get is that JPEG that I clicked in Trimble RealWorks that created uh, that photo. Let me find it back here. So you can get, here's the, the JPEGs, and then you can get that final uh, raw JPEG there that's been stitched together. Uh, the next question, the perspectives computer codes like file naming while a project is in process makes a project um, difficult to find in the app data location. Is that going to change to the actual name for backing up the raw data? Um, checking images, etc. cetera. Uh, perspectives, computer code, file name, finding a project. Uh, so I don't totally understand that question. Um, you can ping me on LinkedIn, you saw there, just ping me a, a message on there and we can get more in depth on that one. Um, what percentage of points are shown in perspective versus real works? So in perspective, we're showing basically what we refer to as a preview scan, about 2 million points for each station. Uh, this makes it quick in the field to see them. It's just enough to see that you've got the data you need and also see the registration is correct. Um, but in real works, you see 100% of the points. So it makes it a lot easier then to go in and uh, look at fine details. And you can see example right here in Trimble real works. If I just display the point cloud, we'll change this to true color. Um, so you can see there's a lot more density on these points. For example, over here, trying to look at this uh, manhole area, we can zoom out and you can see a lot of density on these points here on the ground to see that manhole. Okay, next question. How can we move a region of a scan before registering? For instance, there's a ghost wall inside a room. Uh, so right now, unfortunately, um, not a good way to automatically do that. If you're doing a cloud-based, so if you're using a target-based registration, it's not that big of a deal. If you do the cloud-based registration, if you do the cloud-to-cloud, -cloud, not the automatic, uh, but the cloud-to-cloud -cloud will allow you to go in and remove points uh, before you do the registration, which is great for reflections on from glass or like blowing vegetation in the, in the wind. Uh, another question. You can see the annotations in uh, Scan Explorer and Publisher. Uh, I think that the answer is no for, for now on that one. Um, are there plans to include annotations? Okay, so this was probably answering the last question. Uh, so yes, there are plans to, to do that. I can't give any promises on when, but we know that that would be beneficial. How close are the targets you scan with the X7? How close? Oh, so how, I think the question is, how far away should you put targets? Um, in this case, where did I register those from? I think I was probably um, taking them from about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 meters, something like that. It depends on the size of the target. Um, I was, with the TX-8, we generally use 
100 millimeter spheres. Uh, for the X7, I'll generally use 150 millimeter sphere. Uh, again, the X7 is, um, I think it's half a million points per second, whereas the TX8 is a full million points per second. So you're getting a lot density, and you're getting a lot farther range with the TX8 than the X7. So I would use a little bit bigger sphere um, when, when using that, and this should work out okay. Um, can perspective do the georeferencing of the point cloud? Uh, no, right now, Trimble uh, Perspective isn't doing georeferencing in the field. Uh, okay. Uh, what was the shortcut used when doing this quick segmentation when measuring the heights? Uh, so that was the um, the magnifier tool. So the question was, how did I quickly zoom in to see the, the areas on the pole? Um, so that's where I just hover my mouse over a specific area and then press the N key on my keyboard. So here I'm just pressing the N key, quickly zooms me in so I can see the base. And then if I wanna see the top, I do that. So I use this all the time. I told you earlier, I was using it to check the registration. So I click on the ground. It makes it good for doing really quick spot checks and super efficient for doing line drawing or measurements um, and things like that. Um, just to let you know, I just put out a tips and tricks on the RealWorks community forum. If you go to Trimble Community, you can find the RealWorks forum. And their last tips and tricks had to do with finding shortcut keys in Trimble RealWorks. So uh, a good segue to, to let people know that that's where you can find all the shortcut keys. Uh, there's another question. Can we make partial scans with the X7? Uh, no, at this time. It's just the full 360 uh, scans that you can do with the, with the X7. Uh, there's a question about target-based registration pooling the, the point cloud apart. Uh, yes, so if you do a cloud-based registration with perspective in the field and then want to do a, a target-based registration, um, when you do the registration, I think you actually get a, a warning letting you know it's going to move to the targets and ignore the, the target. I mean, the, the scans will still sit in the same place until you do the target-based registration, and then they'll move to match the targets or the control, which in most cases is probably what you'd like. Can we attach a DSLR with the nodal ninja? Uh, so a lot of times people will like to use an external camera such as a high-end uh, Nikon or Canon camera using the Nodal Ninja to capture the panoramas. Uh, you get some benefits such as longer exposures, a lot higher resolution images, and really fast uh, field time. Um, with this system, there isn't a kit made specifically for the X7 like we had made for the TX8, um, but you could do that. Uh, you would probably want to uh, use the quick release bracket with the X7 and then make a, a, a height mount. Um, um, it's a, I'd have to think about it, but we don't have a pre-made kit. Uh, Trimble RealWorks, the tools that we use to automatically match the panorama images with the scans is called Trimble Real Color. You can see it right up here. That doesn't really care where the images come from. You could have a Nodal Ninja or some of these small little all-in-one 360 cameras. The thing is, you just want to make sure you get them as close to the height of the instrument. Uh, whether you can buy a bracket from Nodal Ninja or, or find one at, from your dealer or, or make one from tools from the hardware store. That's the key is to try to get it as close as possible to the height of the, the scan mirror. Um, how do targets get automatically affected into the geo reference points? Do they have the same code? Um, so in this case, I extracted targets and I had a control file. Um, it's like putting pieces of a puzzle together. The, the geometries of the control file, uh, one control point might have been, you know, 15 meters from the other. Uh, the other one might have been 20 meters from that one. Um, and it looked at the targets and saw that there were distances that matched up and it matched those up. You could also use a georeferencing tool in Trimble RealWorks right up here. Uh, right here, to go in and assign specific coordinates to a target, and it doesn't even have to be a target. You could pick the corner of the building, for example, and assign a coordinate to that to georeference it as well. Of course, you need more than one point. Um, 
but that's how it's doing. The auto extract targets, that's my favorite way to geo-reference is to bring a, a, a control file in and then let it automatically match to the, the targets. Uh, but you, you've also got the, the same manual method, just like you would see in, in Trouble Business Center. Okay, next question. Can the X7 be used without the tablet or without perspective? Um, it could be. The only thing uh, you'll want to use perspective to set the scan resolution. There's, I believe, four different scan times and, and the images, uh, as well as the white balance. So if you want to turn images on or off, and set the white balance for indoor or outdoor or shady. Uh, you would do that with perspective. Once you've done that though, it's saved into the instrument and then you can continue just pushing the power button to initiate the scan. Um, in fact, I do that quite a bit. I've got one scan setting that I want. I think with images, it takes about four minutes uh, to scan and take the images. I use that all the time. So sometimes if uh, I don't have my tablet or if my tablet battery's dead, I forgot to charge it and forgot to charge the backup and forgot to charge the backup of the backup. In that case, uh, then I just push the button and do the scans that way. And I use that workflow of just bringing the data in from the SD card. It'll bring in all of the scans and the images and you saw RealWorks will automatically uh, register and colorize those in, in kind of one step. If you don't want to do it in one step, you could break it up to second steps, uh, several steps. So you have more manual control over doing it as well. Can targets be fitted in perspective during the field work? Um, I think I touched on this a little bit earlier. At this time, no, we don't have the ability to fit targets in perspective. Okay, let's see, I think we saw this question before. Um, can you go over the file storage of the files in perspective? Um, so the file storage of TZF's uh, perspective is more of a project base, so it's not that easy to just go find a file and find the TZF's on perspective. Um, they're they're kind of hidden in the file structure, uh, just the way that it's made to to work. Um, the TZF files uh, do transfer over when you use the uh, TDX export, and also they're also on the SD card. So it's a bit of a redundancy. You've got them stored in both places if you're using Trimble Perspective. Um, is the T10 tablet compatible with the TX8 scanner as well? Uh, so no, it's not the, the uh, when you say the T10, I'm assuming you mean Perspective software. Um, at this time, the Perspective software is only operating the uh, Trimble X7. Um, but you could use a different tablet. Uh, the T10 is the one that's uh, sold in the solution, but if you had a more powerful tablet, you could run Perspective on another tablet, but you have to use it with the X7. Um, I don't follow that. I'm gonna switch to the next question. Um, in perspective, can we export just one scan? I don't think you can pick just one scan to export. In that case, you probably would want to go to uh, the SD card and just grab that single scan. You do have the ability to go and delete scans if you didn't want them, um, but if you had a project and you just wanted to export one, I don't believe you can do that. All right, last question. We're, can I use other software as Autodesk or Revit or only with RealWorks? Um, no, you can use any software you like. Um, so perspective, you saw that we had the different uh, export file formats. Um, where was that screen? Hmm. Here it is. Um, so you can see that we have uh, POD for going to Bentley. We have recap uh, RCP files to go to Autodesk. So you can export it out and bring it into any much any software um, through one of these. Uh, E57 is quite popular through the industry. Uh, PTX, LAS are also quite common. Um, so you can go to any software. You can do the registration there if you prefer. Uh, you can do your line work or your drawings in those. Um, going through any of these uh, common exports. 
Okay, one last question came in. How would it use a control point set in the ground level than the target height? Um, so if you had a control point on the ground level, um, when you create targets, I would probably go into RealWorks and manually create the targets using that target analyzer. And when you extract them, you can apply a height to the target. So if you've got the, the ground heights, you can enter that and then it's going to automatically put that height in for that target. If I was to look at a target, um, registration set, uh, station 26, um, here's a target. Um, I don't see it here, um, but going through the analyzer, uh, I actually did that uh, just yesterday on another project. Um, where they were giving me the ground coordinates as opposed to the the target coordinates, and it worked worked the the same way. You just type in uh, a target height. I don't think you can do it with the automatic. You do it through the target analyzer where you manually create the targets. Okay, so that's it. Um, I have to go back to my last slide page just so it looks like an official ending. Thank you all very much for today. Um, uh, spending your time with me, taking a look at the Trimble X7 with RealWorks, uh, really wanting to get a point across that a uh, very useful instrument and you can get a lot of useful information out of that using Trimble RealWorks, uh, you saw the last question, or whatever software you prefer. Uh, great system all around. Reach out to us certainly on uh, LinkedIn for Trimble Geospatial or follow us on uh, YouTube. And also go to that Trimble scanning website. Uh, again, just Google Trimble scanning and you can find all of the information about all of our scanners and all of our software to support those scanners. Thank you very much.